We're going to be making a clock today. I've already pre-made the sugar cookies. These are vanilla seed um, almond sugar cookies. And the recipe is given under my recipes on my blog. I used a fancy square. And the link is also given on my blog to where I got it. And then this is a combination, which I've talked about a lot, of mocha and cinnamon of Fondorific. And I like this fondant a lot because when I'm doing any type of fashion work, it has unbeatable time. It won't ever get hard on you. This has actually been sitting out for about 10 minutes before we even started. And as you can see, it's very pliable. And the aroma is amazing. It's also Sydney's very favorite flavor. And this one is just a 50-50 of the Cinnabon, or the cinnamon, excuse me, and the mocha. So to make our clock, I want it, I want it to be a timed arrow clock. I thought the fancy square gave me the more, the most beautiful look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Move this out a little so that it's nice and put this here. And put my cookie here. And then I've got a little bit of vodka right here. You can use piping gel if you'd rather. I like the vodka, it evaporates, and because of the way that I'm doing this, it doesn't want to open for me. But because I'm going to be cutting a hole out, I have a little bit more control over how much I am using. And then this is just a regular cosmetic brush that I really like. So because I know that this is the only part that I want to have this particular color of fondant on it, this is the only part I'm going to moisten lightly. You don't want to moisten it too much because you'll have a soggy cookie. But you want to make sure you moisten it enough that it doesn't evaporate before you get done. So we're going to take our fondant piece and we're going to line it up. And I had already, when I baked the cookie, kind of made a little hole in there, or a little circle, excuse me, so that when I went to do this part, it would just give me a guide of where I'm going to put it. So I'm going to take my smoother and gently smooth out any imperfections and attach it to the cookie. And then I'm going to go in with my circle cutter and I can kind of see that line. I'm just going to press and twist a little bit. So I'm going to put a spatula underneath here and gently just lift this up. And because I didn't put any alcohol or anything on the circle part, I'm going to smooth this out just a little bit where I don't like how it I can put this back in my bag and use it again. So now I've got my clock face. I do want to make sure that this is on pretty good, so I'm going to smooth it out just a little bit. And that looks pretty good. I'm pretty even here. Okay. So then we're going to make the face. And because I want my face to be a light white color. Move this out of the way for a second. I am only going to use the cinnamon, which the cinnamon is a bridal white. So you get a nice light color. And that way my face will have a nice light color. So I think that should be about enough. I'm going to move him out of the way so he does not get hurt. And for those of you who don't know me, I started talking without introducing myself. I'm Bobby of Bobby's Baking Blog. My little baking partner in crime is in D.C. But she's on FaceTime right now watching as I put this together. So if I mess up, she'll let me know. That noise was my pasta machine. That's optional. 
I just want everything to be even, so it's on a zero, which would be your widest. I'm just going to go ahead and cut my circle out, and I'm going to twist to make sure we get a nice, clear, clean piece. And I'm going to put this back in this bag, so it does not... Well, Thunderific actually doesn't ever dry out, but... Which is one of the reasons I like it so much. But it has endless time to work with. Alright, so now I've got a nice, beautiful circle. I'm going to bring the cookie back in. I'm going to lift this up with my offset spatula and move it over for a second so that you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to go back into my alcohol. And I'm just going to brush my circle. Make sure that I get that nice and moist without overdoing it. And then I'm going to go ahead and gently just sit that in there. Now it's okay if I have this space in between here because later on when we go to make our clock face, you'll see why that isn't going to matter at all. So I'm not going to worry about that. If I wasn't going to make an outline, I would then be panicking. But because I am, it's okay. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I want to do a lace type of brush embroidery. And I have some scraps pieces of lace, or cut pieces of lace, I should say. And I'm just looking for the pattern that I want. And this is the one that I want. So I'm going to put this on, figure out which side I like how I want it to look on there. I'm trying not to get too much on the face of the clock. I think like this one better. Yes, this one was cut better for it. So as you can see, we've got it almost looks like a six petal blossom. So I'm going to put this on in the corner here. I'm going to gently press it with my hands. I don't want to make my fondant move or distort. And then I'm going to lightly just smooth it on there until I can almost see the fondant raising through the mark. And the idea is we're going to later on brush embroidery this. I want to be able to see what I'm doing. I want to have enough of, a, of an impression that I can go over it with my royal ice. And this cookie could be the, done the same with all royal icing. You would just flood this part, this kind of tan, and then this part, probably white, I would say. You wouldn't be able to do this part of the lace, but you could make royal icing lace and still do a brush embroidery or do a five petal, uh, scribe a five petal cutter into your corners and do the same brush embroidery technique. You would not be doing this, obviously, you'd be ruining your real lacing, but you can do it with either. These are for Sydney, and she likes the fondant with the royal icing. The cookie tends to say softer, and it has quite a nice little texture between the soft fondant and the crunchy royal icing. And I do not flavor my royal icing with anything but lemon, because I didn't want it to mix too much with the flavors I already have going on between the cinnamon and the mocha and the vanilla and the almond of the cookie. When I make my royal icing, I just use a little bit of lemon juice. As you can see, I'm getting a nice impression. I want to get some of the stitching in here so that I can have a nice broad area. It's okay if we go over a little bit of the face of the clock. I mean, I would go over the whole clock, but a little bit of the face is okay. Like I said, we're going to be putting a border in between the clock and... or the face of the clock and the outside of the clock, excuse me. 
So I had done a drawing of this, which I didn't show you. And I can stop and do this because the Fonderific will give me an unbelievable time to work on. So I'm going to show you how soft the Fonderific can stay. But this is pretty much what our design is going to look like. And this is going to be some sort of beading or line when we get to that point. We'll have our brush embroidery here, and we'll be decorating the outside. So it will end up looking like an antique 1920s clock. And then when I get to these little points here, I just want to use this little teardrop almost of the blossom or the petal of the blossom so that I get the same type of pattern. And after you're done with this particular part, you can allow the fondant to set if you want, or you can go and start brush embroidering. It's your preference. If you're pretty confident in your brush embroidery and you don't think you're going to dent your fondant with your fingers, I would go right for it. If not, you can let it sit for a couple hours and go back and do your brush embroidery. Once you do that brush embroidery, though, you're going to want to let that sit four hours to overnight before you do the next part of your And you want to make sure that your lace is facing the part of the lace that would be outside on a dress or a garment. You don't want the back. That wouldn't make a real pretty impression. And if you didn't have the lace, um, you could use, they have wonderful, Gem has amazing lace impression. Um, cutters or stamps, excuse me, or you could use a regular stamp. So that's up to you. But that's our lace impression.